So I'm here with you, with Zoe, Zoe Tomaki. We had the opportunity to work together on, uh, on a project recently, and we want to take some time to just video ourselves, talking about the work, talking about a couple of key, key lessons to yeah. hopefully help other practitioners uh, with this sort of stuff. Just as a way of introduction, I'm Eugene Kim, and I help groups basically work together more effectively. Um, my goal is to help groups at a societal scale, and the way that has manifested in the past has been as a consultant, basically helping groups who come to us with specific needs around working together more effectively. I've been doing less of that work recently, um, partially because, or largely because, I'm more focused on helping uh, how we can be more effective at collaboration at scale. But I do occasionally take on projects when I have the excuse to work with practitioners like you, which is basically what happened with this project. Yeah, which was so fun. Which was really fun. Um, as, sorry, um, as you know, my name is Zoe Tamaki. Um, I work as a nonprofit management consultant. And so in my work, we support nonprofits, as larger nonprofits, as well as philanthropies to help them think about their business strategies. Everything from their intended impact all the way to their operating model. And so we really help people think about those strategic decisions from impact, with impact in mind always, but starting about what is the strategic clarity that you need and then how do you actually deliver it. Um, before that, I actually worked in brand and marketing consulting and really focused on customer experience and brand innovation. And so I also love doing things like this because it gives me a chance to go back to those more creative roots. And I think the way that you think about your work is also just quite different and a little radical compared to how I do my work. And so it's always fun for us to collaborate. And I think I learn a lot from you and hope you learn one thing or two from me and think, think we have like a good time regardless. <laughs> but definitely a good time. No, in, in all seriousness, right? Like that's exactly why I like doing this and why yeah. hopefully other practitioners do this. It's an opportunity. Uh, when you work with other practitioners, you not only learn from them yeah. and their way of thinking and stuff, but it's actually, uh, it ends up being an interesting way to become self-aware about your mm. own process and assumptions. Yeah. And then you could have conversations about it, like yeah. we're kind of doing right now. So. Awesome. So we were working with a small nonprofit, so right up your alley in some ways, although smaller than you typically work with. Yeah, a little smaller with. than usual. A lot smaller than usual probably, right? Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the story of this particular client, uh, it basically started as an art project almost 20 years ago now. Uh, this guy basically had a project he wanted to do. He did it. It attracted a lot of interest. And in some ways, he followed kind of a traditional path in that he's like, well, we should start a nonprofit and um, we should find ways for other people to access this art yeah. and maybe other artists um, support other artists who are doing similar things. And so, uh, so he went, started going down a path that's, that's very common with nonprofits and that they try to, you know, sort of professionalize, yeah. um, try to raise money in kind of traditional ways, build out grant applications as well as, you know, individual donors, um, tried to get people to help both as volunteers. Um, and at some point he had some, some paid staff yeah. helping him. And then, uh, and then it became, like many nonprofits, it was not a great experience for him for a variety of ways. He felt like, what was, what was the term he was, he was using to describe sort of that fundraising cycle that a lot of nonprofits find themselves in? Is that rhetorical? Do you actually remember? I, I don't remember. It was like, <laughs> was it a treadmill or something well, like that? Maybe it was that? a treadmill. Yeah, hamster yeah. wheel. <laughs> I think it was hamster wheel. Yeah. yeah, hamster wheel sounds more, if it wasn't hamster wheel, it should have been hamster wheel. It should have been hamster wheel. Yeah. yeah. So he was kind of like chasing the money and finding that it was detracting from, from the art mm -hmm. and, uh, and all those things. So, um, so he kind of started moving away from that. And one thing he has been very good at over the years is just asking for help. Yeah. Incredible network. That's how we got involved. Yeah. Um, but he's always had like a really great board. He's always had really great volunteers yeah. who helped him. 
and that kind of is the subtext for, for how we got involved. The one other thing that I think is important to describe about the project, and this was sort of the unique attribute that we were grappling with, was um, basically he's always had a job. This has <laughs> never been his full-time work. Yeah. And so it's been his side project. He's invested a ton of time in the past. Um, and then, was it a year ago now, he took on a full-time job? Yeah. And in addition to that, he a couple of years ago, he took on a teaching job at a local university. Yeah. Um, and so he was basically doing one and a half jobs yeah. plus this nonprofit work. And um, that ended up being both a pro and a con because um, what happened with the university was that he was able to leverage his students. Yeah. Yeah. So create like course credit to, to participate in his nonprofit um, and also even some paid opportunities. Anything else? Did I miss anything? Is that enough context? I would say, and then he also had twins. <laughs> that, that's the important that, one. Like, and he had twins. Not just so a baby. Boro, two yeah. kids, and it, I think from our conversations, it felt like at that point he realized that like, he only had two hours a week to dedicate to this organization. And so there was this question around what does ruthless prioritization look like and how do yeah. I actually draw um, meaningful boundaries because it's no longer him being affected, it's, it's those family it's life. his family life. We actually had done this last year, which was super fun and sort of, I think, a good way for us to like get to know each other as facilitators yeah, and also and just like design, de meeting designers. Mm -hmm. um, and so this year they wanted to have another retreat and they had, they have a small board. I think they have yeah. about 10. I think it's nine. Nine, seven. nine folks yeah. and only seven people were able to make it. Um, and we had about a half day with them to, I think initially they came to us wanting to do a look back and then visioning for the future. Um, and we can talk a little bit more yeah. about how that evolved, but I think they were just looking for support for someone to create the space for them to have these conversations. They came in basically saying, we, um, this is our situation for this year. Yeah. Uh, like. 2019, 2020 is pretty much set, but what we really want to do is we want to think about like what our strategy might be or what our vision might be for the next three years, three yeah. to five. Yeah. And um, and then on top of that, they had two new board members, so they wanted to, to orient those board members. Yeah. Um, it didn't end up being that, um, so we kind of pushed back a little bit on, on that in the design process. We didn't push back, we sort of started asking them why they yeah. wanted it and started digging a little bit deeper um, and eventually landed on a design that was not 100% different, but certainly framed in a different way, felt a, felt mm -hmm. a lot different and, um, uh, and it was a good meeting. Yeah. They were really happy with the results. We hit all our goals. And people had fun. And people had fun. Which, which is, is like such a win. Which yeah. is always a win, yeah. yeah. First lesson we want to talk about is about um, the client's self-determination. Yeah. And so one of the things that, that came up in our debrief was that in our process, there was a core assumption that groups, when given the opportunity, mm -hmm. are intelligent. <laughs> Revolutionary. Revolutionary. <laughs> Revolutionary. But we don't often behave that way. Yeah. Right? In totally. terms of giving people an opportunity to self-determine, yeah. to come to their own answers. And so our role as consultants in this process was to create a space both at the meeting itself, but actually even before the meeting and the design of the meeting mm -hmm. to bring out the intelligence of the group yeah. and to, to find ways to pull out that wisdom so that they could clearly create a, a great experience yeah. for themselves. And uh, of course, we're part of that. We're not just sitting back and saying, what well, do you guys want to design? And then just writing down whatever they say. So our role in that process was to be provocative, to ask good questions, to notice dynamics and to push yeah. when, when we were seeing them. Um, and, uh, and we ended up with a meeting where they owned a lot of that process. A lot of yeah. the modules were things that they came up with. Um, and it was very different from what the 
what they had originally come to us with. It was totally different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any thoughts to add on that? What was your experience of, of that process? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I would say it felt very much like they were walking a few steps in front of us and mm -hmm. sort of like sharing how they would want things to unfold and we were asking them questions that made them either pause or like move a little to the left or move a little to the right but there was really um they had the agency to make these decisions and i think to your point point earlier not all consultants sort of approach the work in that way and so i i felt like it was just so powerful to see them feel truly bought in because they were part of the design and shaping what the day would look like and I think it was helpful for us later on um, mm. to have them advocating for the different activities that were a bit unorthodox and were yeah. pushed a lot of people to think differently, to also be a little silly and do things that maybe they wouldn't have expected at a typical board retreat. I would say that in our design process, it was interesting, and I think I was wrestling with it within myself. Um, when one of the board members that we were working with recommended spending like four hours, just or like three hours, doing a speed dating activity, um, and giving people space to connect with one another and just get to know each other, um, both professionally but also personally, because a lot of these people had either never met or met like twice mm -hmm. and then had seen each other last year um, mm -hmm. and so the level of social cohesion was actually not as strong as it could have been mm -hmm. and so um, I think for me personally it was really interesting realizing that as someone who says I believe deeply in like personal connection and how relationships are truly what drive this type of work that I was like, oh, <laughs> we're going to spend four hours and not be strategic, strategic or mm -hmm. like focusing on content um, that I had to like do a check of myself and realize that actually the, for the, them to have the conversations they needed to have, which were conversations that were quite like difficult required them to be really real with each other about um what they were willing to give but also their boundaries around what they weren't willing to give that like that needs to be rooted in trust yeah and that you can't just jump into those conversations and we were actually setting the groundwork for them to be able to have those conversations um as a board for the next 12 months. Um, and so I came around and then when everyone was so happy, I like, I was like, okay, this was the right move. Yeah. But I think it was interesting for myself to just kind of like, I, I think it was a question of like, what, are, what is the value that I am bringing if we are not playing such an active role? Um, but I think to realize that like actually the creating of the container and just holding that space and literally ringing the bell when people need to rotate is actually like all they needed and the group could, to your point earlier, um, self-manage mm -hmm. because they were all adults and very capable and also just like incredibly smart and thoughtful. I think the other thing to point out about like that that tension between like relational time versus like task oriented time mm -hmm. is that it, it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive. Yeah, totally. And so I think like you made a really good point about just like actually the dynamic in the room and the relationships that people have in the trust, like they can't do the work unless it, it's, mm -hmm. it's a prerequisite. And at the same time, like naturally part of the things that people are going to talk about like we we know that some of the things people talked about on their dates was actually about the work. Yeah. So so they're going to naturally gravitate towards those conversations. Mm -hmm. It's not neither or or. Yeah. Or. yeah. It was a very yeah. smooth meeting overall, um, and you facilitated most of it, um, and then I just came in and did little modules, and I did like a little module in the end uh, where I think I was just like facilitating a little bit of a next steps conversation, yeah. um, and then at the very very end. Um, I had a little facilitation moment where I basically said, okay, 
there were two people um, on the board who weren't here. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to give you all an opportunity to like create a little video. And it's just going to be like two to three minutes where one or two of you comes up in front of the video camera and you're going to give a brief summary of what happened. And now you can just share that video with the two board members who weren't there. Mm -hmm. um, and this is something that we had, like this is something I've done before actually in a lot of groups. Um, it's something we mentioned in the design process, but it was kind of a shortened yeah. design process. It was kind of a throwaway conversation. And, and you know, the, the two people working with us were like, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it was like buried under a lot of other It was buried under a lot of stuff. And when I said we're going uh, to do this, it's going to be our last exercise and we'll bring it to a close, uh, there were two people who resisted pretty strongly yeah. to that. And so the question is, what do you do in that situation yeah. as a facilitator? Um, so I definitely had a perspective on that. Do you want to share what you saw and like whether you felt like it was? Yeah, the analogy I would use is it was like watching someone go for the the last second layup and just kind of having it slap down. <laughs> like, no, I love the basketball. Slap down a little bit, but yeah. then what was amazing was you were packed, but then the board chair picked up the ball and threw it back into the hoop, yeah. and I think. Um, those that don't watch basketball and have no idea where we just went with that, um, after there was pushback, the board chair that we had been designing with, as well as the founder, actually, pretty strongly, I think, advocated to do it. Um, it felt important and a way to bring those people along and just also felt like a nice artifact to have. Um, and I think you said one thing where you were like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was really the founder and the um, board chair to just say, like, no, this is something that would be pow powerful and valuable, and we want us to have this. Yeah. That um, made someone, made, I don't know if the whole group, I don't think we we're at 100% buy in. Yeah. But 95% of the people were. Either bought in or didn't care. Bought, bought in, didn't Which care, but we're in the video regardless. Yes, exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's always an interesting thing. I mean, it speaks again to what we talked about in the opening just around that self-determination. Mm -hmm. When people own it, then, uh, then you're not the only person in the room facilitating, mm -hmm. right? Like, like many other people are facilitating because they've been part of that design process. They own mm -hmm. the modules. Um, and so obviously that made it super easy. Um, you don't always have that. And so as a facilitator, you have to decide what you're going to do mm -hmm. when facing that resistance. Uh, a lot of facilitators will just give yeah. in that situation. Um, and I think that's an appropriate answer, but I think you want to give for the right reasons. Yeah. So, uh, so there's certainly, you know, there's something about, mm -hmm. you know, the, the container and about like, like giving the group ownership over yeah. where they go and being flexible about it. Um, but there's also something around the goal orientation as well, yeah. right? And it's like, you know what you're trying to achieve out of it. Um, and you have to decide in the moment whether the resistance mm -hmm. is like, whether it's just one person, whether, uh, whether it's about um, some, some need that they have that you need to mm -hmm. honor and prioritize or whether like the, the stuff that you worked out beforehand is, is yeah. going to be, you know, a bigger deal in that case. What would you have done if, um, even after your, the two advocates spoke up, if there was still pushback? Um, I wouldn't have fought that hard on this one. Yeah. You have this, so you, you talk about people being on brand, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. And so like for me as a facilitator, it would have been on brand for me to resist, mm -hmm. right? I think that's part <laughs> I of think my that's brand. that's right, yeah. Um, and I would have, I would have like posed a question about mm -hmm. how they wanted to share, like just frame it as like, this is your opportunity to do something really simple as yeah. a way to share it. It's something I've done with other groups. And I also would have said, and I probably, I might have even said this, I don't remember now, like, it's up to you. Yeah. Right, that was, that really wasn't that important. Yeah. It is an interesting question, though, around sort of the role of 
in the design process bringing people along, right? Because yeah. I think something that I was thinking about as that was happening was that like, if we had had more time, we really only had three weeks, right? Yeah, three we had a weeks, shortened design um, to day. do it, but that in theory it would have been amazing if like everyone could have like had a voice and had seen the agenda and that like, um, I think it just goes back to like the power of participation, and I think we're we're always constrained by like time too, and I think the option of participation is always helpful because then if people don't agree with the direction, they all, they just have to acknowledge that like they had a choice to yeah. give input and chose not to. Yeah. The one thing I would underscore about the day that I loved was that we also just like invited people to have a good time mm. um that i think the relationship building part was powerful but also we just tried to make that to these like really interactive push people outside of their comfort zone and invited them to push the boundaries of themselves and in doing so, I think also push the boundaries of how they think about their role and how they think about this organization. And so, um, I think I hope folks had fun. I hope they, they leave, they a, con leave a comment. We had a survey. Leave a comment if they didn't. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I had a good time, which I think, I don't know, as a facilitator, it's, you don't always have fun. Um, sometimes <laughs> you're like, yeah. I'm here to help you, like to help the help hold the container in your getting tired but yeah. this was just like such a joyful day um and one i really appreciate it yeah do you have any last thoughts uh other than um i had fun doing it i agree um and i had fun doing it with you yeah so thank you for doing that and thank you for doing this yeah of course all right good job good good ending <laughs>